All right, welcome back. This is our GMC tweet of the night, and you can see most forced incompletions and interceptions. This is from PMF, PMF P, no, not PMF, PFF, right? Um, Pro Mulsey focus there, yeah. PMF. They focus on every segment I do on the radio. There you go. Eight by both Tavon Diggs and Trayvon Diggs, excuse me, and Cam Sutton. So, you know, I, I always say, and all the guys on the, on the Steelers that you talk to, some of the coaches and the players, uh, Cam Sutton's football IQ is through the roof. Yeah, I mean, he made a really nice play in that Jets game uh, that I'm already forgetting now, but I remember just thinking, wow, that's a really heads-up play. Uh, to do, I think it was just to break up a pass. The guy came off his receiver and noticed where Wilson was heading with the football. He's done that multiple times this year. But, man, Richie, aren't we kind of like, I think, I think we're both trying to maybe wish something into existence, like finding reasons to try to hope for this secondary against Josh Allen. Fact of the matter is, that dude is just way better than anybody that's going to be trying to stop him. And frankly, their offensive scheming and the way they go about it with Ken Dorsey, who I know made all the headlines for his big tantrum in the press box, right, after the Miami game ended. Yeah. But Ken Dorsey right now, I think, has to be given the leg up on anybody that's trying to run the Steelers' defense because I think it's really – I'll be quick about this. I think it's really disheartening. It's one thing if, like, you don't have the horses on the field to do what they, they usually do, right, with Watt out. I thought Flores, Tomlin, Austin was supposed to be like an elite defensive brain trust. What is Zach Wilson in the complete absence of a running game doing just absolutely cooking you because you're not even trying to come after him? That just made no sense to me, man. Hey, they were able to bottle up Allen last year, but they had T.J. Watt. Um, so if he can't beat you by with his arm, he's going to beat you with his legs. Let's go out to Mike in Monroeville. How you doing, Mike? Hey, how you doing, man? Good, thanks you for know, calling. Everybody all hyped up about Kenny Pickett quarterback and Huh. It doesn't matter. As long as you got Matt Canada, it's not going to work. That Matt Canada is the worst this offensive coordinator, period. He he did not know how to make no adjustments, and he, the pro game is too far. I got bad, I got bad news for you, ma'am. I got bad news for you. So Canada's got apparently one year left on his deal uh, as coordinator. And think about this. When the Steelers haven't liked somebody's work as a, on their coaching staff, have they fired guys lately or have they let contracts run out? I think you know the answer to that. So what do you think? It's probably another year of Matt Canada. So here's what I was thinking. Um, this is the best thing that could happen for Matt Canada, honestly. Uh, Kenny Pickett coming in because if they stay with Mitch Trubisky, obviously that offense wasn't doing anything. If Kenny Pickett does anything, uh, that might be the way that Canada keeps his job. Well, if Kenny Pickett does well, like, yeah, I mean, they'll at least have good performance to fall it would, have, it would have never happened with Mitch Trubisky. Well, no, I saying. mean, but I mean, like, I think they would say, oh, it proves that Matt Canada's offense works if it works with Pickett. I don't know. If Pickett's just making better reads and still throwing into tight windows, I think that doesn't necessarily bode well for Canada's offense. Richie, you watch a lot of football just like I do. Don't you agree that the best coordinators, not only they play the chess match really well in the game, but don't you think the best offensive minds have schemes that just scheme their best players open? Like, I know Sean McVay and the Rams are actually struggling this year. They're, like, de near dead last in the league in offense, believe it or not. But by and large, he finds ways to get Cooper Cup open, even though everybody knows Cooper Cup's going to get the ball. Kyle Shanahan, same thing. I could go on and on. McDaniel in Miami. What concepts do the Steelers run under Matt Canada where you see guys just running free in the secondary because he's bamboozled, bamboozled excuse me, the defense? My answer would be nothing. No, you would think Deontay Johnson would be the one guy to get open. I mean, Antonio Brown was always open, uh, and they had, they had plays to get him open, uh, but you don't see that right now. Let's go out to Steve and Katanning. How you doing, Steve? Steve, you there? It's Chipper. Hey, Chipper. Uh, his idea for him to start him with back Canada. Canada tried to make Ben look bad his last year with his play calling. Ben didn't have nothing of it. He made Trubisky look bad with his play calling. Everything underneath. I think Trubisky made passes. himself look bad. Look, I'm not saying that, that Matt Canada is any good. But uh, Trubisky didn't they do didn't, himself they didn't, any favors. And, and they didn't run Canada's offense with Ben because Ben physically, mobility-wise, couldn't run it. So whatever that offense was last year, it wasn't Canada's offense. Not that I'm defending Canada. It was some weird Frankenstein hybrid of what Ben was comfortable with, whatever Canada was allowed to actually put in there as far as precepts go and, and kind of everything else. And then they mishmashed it together and hoped it worked. 
It usually worked best when Ben ended up calling the plays and they ended up going tempo late in games in the fourth quarter, which should again probably tell you something about Matt Canada's base packages. They're designed and built to beat college defenders. That's, that's just like a fact, Richie. Let's go out to Joe in Pittsburgh. How you doing, Joe? Joe, you there? Yeah. What's going on? Hello. Yep. I just want to know how come everybody blames the offense coordinator? They blame the defense. They blame the quarterback. How come we don't blame Tomlin? Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Nobody's ever blamed Mike Tomlin in this town. I've, this is actually, thank you for doing that. This is the first time I've ever heard somebody in my entire career blame Mike Tomlin for the Steelers' struggles. I'm going to run that one up the flagpole at work and see if everybody likes that as an idea. In fact, tomorrow, Richie, I'm going to say to Pony, hey, listen, man, I got something pretty, pretty novel for 2 o'clock. What if Mike Tomlin bears some of the blame for these problems? He named basically the entire team. Offense, defense, offensive line, quarterback. Yeah, I think Tomlin gets the most blame. Honestly, I mean, more. The, and he, the, the and he deserves calls, it. He deserves yeah. it more now than he ever has before, I think. I think it's been a slow but steady build here. I think there have been obvious times where he's deserved a lot of criticism in the past, but he made a lot of this mess. His defense isn't finding ways to still, like, thrive without TJ Watt. I know that's a big Jenga piece, but it yeah. shouldn't be that big. And he, I think he's butchered this quarterback situation. I think he should have put Pickett in the game to start against the Jets. He let himself get swayed by Mitch Trubisky's first half against Cleveland, and it might have ended up costing them a win because I think if Pickett practices as the one all week, plays as the one from, the, from minute one against the Jets, I think there's a chance they win that game. These are the situation, these are the types of years that Tomlin thrives. I mean, he's always made the best of what he had. Uh, and somehow found a way to get a winning record. I don't think that's going to happen here. I know it's not really a, a relevant streak at all, but um, I think his winning records. Streak they could. They could. Frankly, I mean, let's be end. honest. Let's be real about something here. I'm. I'm all for hard truths. They could probably use a pick in the five to eight range to try to get a franchise level yeah. tackle, get a huge infusion of talent on that offensive line. And then this is the thing nobody ever mentions when you have a, a top pick in the first round. Guess where your picks tend to fall in the second, third, and fourth rounds? A lot earlier than they otherwise do, unless you're making big wheel and deal and moves. So they could afford to pick near the top of most rounds in 2023 because they need to get younger and more talented at a variety of positions. That's a fact. Yeah, you need to have a couple bad years before you get good because, you know, that was the Pirates' problem for so many years. They were picking in the middle. Uh, they've had other issues. Uh, but I'm just saying, you'd rather rather. You mean be the Steelers' really, problems, really right? Bad. You said you said Pirates, well, Richie, pi and I'm I'm gonna chalk that okay. up to Bucko a, fever. Bucko fever. It, your fever just broke a couple of hours ago, so I'm going to give you a pass there. Let's go out to Chipper and Conway. How you doing, Chipper? Hey, how are you doing, guys? Good. Thanks for calling. Yeah, I don't know. I just, you know, they put. Uh... You're not so Chipper, are you, Chipper? Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, just, I just, it's like, man, uh, you know, they threw uh, Pickett in there in the second half, and and everybody said, yeah, yeah, and all this, all that, all the big hype, whatever, how you want to say it. But uh, I just, like, I just, the previous. I, all right, let's see what happens this weekend, right?